we are going to do a real quick how to adjust the volume reducers in an Olin's TTX air. So first thing, make sure you've let all the air out of the shock and that that's done. <clears throat> You're going to need the Shimano bottom bracket tool. I'll put a link to these. You can grab it on Amazon in the um, description of the video. So slide this on and then use soft jaws in your vise and uh, put them in there and then take this and pop it loose. Okay. So just spin it. It'll eventually get loose enough. So you'll be able to spin it by hand. Go ahead and get this thing open. So there are these volume bands already in here. And uh, as you can see, it's about the size. They are, each band is 2,000 millimeters cubed. Uh, and it says I need 8,000. So there are four on there now. So I actually don't need to change this. And one of the things, so you can lift this can so on this shock, if you can see in there, that's the other place you can use these puck versions of volume reducers. I can't tell if there's a, oh, there is a puck in there. So mine says I only need 8,000, so I would actually be over 8,000 right now. Okay, so there's a puck in here. So I reached in here with a small screwdriver to get it out. You want to be careful around the shaft. Um, that's a significantly sized puck. I, they don't say what they are. Olin says they're fixing that, so you don't know what size that puck is. The other thing to note on this shock is there are this, there's this tab right here on it. You want to note that it lines up and where so that you can put this shock can back down correctly on this particular spring. Now, I know that this was facing to the right, so I'm gonna go to the one that's on the right on this particular shock. So I've removed that puck, and I'm just gonna use the ones here because I know that's 8,000 as it was looking for. You can make this shock very progressive or more linear. That's the beauty of a TTX Air 2 is it can be more linear for a more progressive frame. If you have a less progressive frame, you just use a one um, and get that progressivity out of the air shock. So you will line up that tab just like that. Get that all pushed down. Wipe this off. Okay. They say using these or using a puck that there's no difference because it only adjusts positive wherever you do it. Uh, I'm going to trust that that's true for Mullins. Okay, now you take this and you push it down. You're going to get some resistance. And you just get those threads caught. And you tighten this back down. Now on the TTX Air, they have rebound and compression adjustments right here. Three millimeter, three millimeter Allen keys. This is actually a, a switch that goes between two different high speed compression settings and then a circuit that closes high and low speed at the same time. It is completely independent from these adjustments from the low speed compression and rebound. It's just a high speed compression setting. Uh, so basically you'll run it in one when you want the bike to be more natural terrain, something steep, you want the back to settle down a little compared to the front so you can ride a steeper trail. And you'll want the two when you're riding flow trails, berms, things like that. And then you'll go into three, essentially as a pedaling platform for climbing. Um, or unless you really need to firm the shock up for something that, you know, you're gonna go do some bigger jumps, things like that, you might want to. Okay, we got that tightened up. Let's go ahead and get this turned here so you can see it. Um, that's essentially how you're gonna get this job done. Get this O-ring back down. Um, few things about this shock that are a little bit unique. One, 
There's a few ways to probably get this shock where you want it air-wise. Um, we'll go to Owen's website. I'll put a link to the tool. You can put in your bike. Uh, you can put in uh, your weight and sag. Set sag at 30%. It gives you a great starting point. That's how you'll know what's going on in here. By putting in your bike, Owen's has already put in base tune information. And so you should get the right information for your shock to be installed. They're very finicky on the setup. Um, they, have, they have a transfer port, but unlike a lot of shocks where the transfer port works really well, uh, this transfer port, you can't hear it and you really have to be careful. So I add air incrementally and then keep doing it. Some people say just over pressurize it and then do it and check. Um, but it gets really hard to push down. You'll know you've got it wrong because the shock will top out really hard. The other thing, once it's done right, the shock's gonna sit a couple millimeters into the sag. That's really normal with this shock. So don't, I run it on a couple of their bikes. Don't get excited and think there's something wrong. Uh, you actually want that. The Fox Flodex 2 uh, now does it. They've adopted that. Um, Brock Shock still doesn't. So uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit like. Uh, I will be doing a comparison between this and the X2 on and a coil on the Firebird and kind of tell you what I think. This so far is one of my favorite air shocks I've ever ridden on any of my other bikes. I have it on two now. They are a little bit more linear, so they're, you're able to have more adjustability uh, with the air can itself, uh, but they much less adjustability in the damper system, which they're so close to start with, it hasn't been a problem. So uh, I'll get those done, we'll see. The Float X2 has been so good on the pivot. If, if this is even better, that'll be amazing. If not, we'll all have two great shocks for it. So I hope you uh, like this video and I hope to see you out on the trails.